I'm Trevor Bird with meetme.ca and we're going to teach you how to make the best stress-free holiday turkey of your life. So this turkey is pasture raised in BC and it is a beautiful product. You can tell by how big the wings are on it. You can tell that these guys have never been in a cage and they are constantly exposed to the outdoors. They have nice big thighs on it, big legs, which means they're walking around a lot and we're going to have to cook that for a good amount of time to break that connective tissue down so you have a nice soft confit leg on your turkey. There's a beautiful coverage of fat over top of it which is going to help with the basting of the turkey as it cooks and it also leaves a lot of room so that you can put a lot of herbs and garlic underneath the skin and butter. First we're going to brine this turkey for one to two days and then we're going to slow roast it for five to six hours and then we're going to blast it with heat and get a really nice golden brown sear on it. But the great thing about this is is that Instead of having your turkey overcook within a 20 minute window or a 10 minute window, that's going to go to a two to three hour window. So you can drink as much wine as you like while your turkey's in the oven. Two liters of water into a pot. Half a cup of salt. And I'm going to go half a cup of maple syrup because maple brine turkey sounds all right with me. I'm gonna throw some garlic in there just for an extra little bit of aromatics and a little bit of thyme. You can put orange peel in there, you can put other herbs in there, sage, rosemary, it doesn't matter. It's all up to your creativity. I'm just gonna put this on the heat to dissolve the salt and warm up the brining liquid and we're gonna pour this over the turkey. You want to make sure that your turkey is completely submerged in the brine and you want to make sure your brine is cooled before you dump it over your turkey. Another really good trick is to use one liter of water and one and a half liters of ice. Dissolve all the sweetness and salt in the water and dump it over the ice to cool it down immediately and dump it over your turkey right away. And then you can leave it outside for two days as long as it's less than four degrees Celsius. A 16 liter pail works really well to brine your turkey or you can call your local Tupperware agent and just get a piece of Tupperware that will fit your turkey nice and snugly. The more snug your turkey is in the container, the less brine you're going to have to use. So what you want to do is take your turkey and place it in the container. Nice home. So you want to make sure that your cold brine covers the turkey. If your container is a little bit too small for the turkey and your breasts are above the water here, just like this here, don't be shy to flip it around. It's the breast that you really want to brine. What happens is osmosis. The salinity from the brine gets pulled into the middle of the turkey. You get a very even salt level at that point and it's salty all the way through your turkey. Christmas day morning, the time is here. What you want to do is pick up this beautiful bird. Just let it drain out a little bit. Give it a good stretch. Make sure there's not too much liquid on it and put it in your roasting pan. This brine is going down the drain. With this turkey, I wouldn't put too much pressure on yourself to truss it or get the legs together like this. You can, it doesn't really make a difference. You're gonna have an awesome turkey either way. To avoid the wings from getting burnt, what you wanna do is take the wings and just put it directly behind its head like it's chilling out on a beach. When you go to roast your turkey, you wanna make sure that you have a pan with a drip tray on it so that all the turkey juices can drip through the turkey into the bottom of your pan and that's going to make an awesome turkey gravy. You can put your turkey directly into the pan but when you go to take it out of the pan or you go to move it it's going to stick to the bottom you're going to get the turkey fat stuck to the bottom it just makes it a bit more difficult to maneuver and plus it makes you look a little bit more professional. With this here even though the turkey is brined we want to add a little bit more salt to the skin and we can definitely stuff the tur underneath this turkey so that when it cooks, it spends some nice time in a lot of herbs. Let it rain with the salt. Don't be shy. You have to put a lot of salt on this to make it too salty. For a turkey this size, 20 to 25 pounds, it should take you between 5 to 7 hours at 200 degrees Fahrenheit. You want to cook this turkey till the internal temperature by the thigh is 65 degrees Celsius. And then we're going to finish it with a really hot blast of heat to color the turkey nice and evenly. And it's going to bring it up just a little bit more to a perfect well done.
My advice is go get a thermometer to cook a turkey so that you can actually hit the temperature that you like. But if you don't have one and you just need to make sure it's done, the easiest way to do it is pull on the thigh. And if the thigh easily comes off the turkey, like it's gonna break and there's no red or no blood in the middle, it's good to go. You wanna cook your turkey at 200 degrees Fahrenheit with a convection oven or 250 degrees in a conventional oven. A convention is with no fan. And that is a perfectly browned pasture raised turkey. So what you wanna do is keep your turkey in the oven until you're ready to serve it. About 15 minutes before your family's ready to eat, crank the oven up to 500 degrees for 10 to 15 minutes. And you're gonna have a beautiful, evenly browned turkey. So what you wanna do, the turkey should be warm but not super hot. You just lift it up by the cavity and put it on your cutting board. Another small piece of advice, I never like to cook stuffing inside of the turkey, but that's up to you. So to carve this turkey like a pro, what you wanna do is actually take the breasts and legs off the turkey and then put it together afterwards. Traditionally, you might see people carving turkey straight off like this that actually goes against the grain of the turkey and might make it a little bit tougher to eat. So what you wanna do is take the turkey breasts and line it up directly with you straight up and down. There's a wishbone right in the middle of the turkey that splits it like this. So you wanna take your knife cut down the turkey and then off to the side. You go down the turkey till your knife stops and then you take it off to the side. You can first cut the thigh away. So you just have to make an incision into the thigh to pull away from the actual body. And then right down the middle with a nice sharp knife, go down until your knife stops and then slowly move away. So it's a motion like this for the left side, a motion like this for the right side. There's one breast and we can take off the leg as well. And when you cook your turkey this low and long, the bones just fall apart because it's almost confiting, which is a really slow roast where everything just kind of falls apart. And you can have the leg right there and all of the thigh meat that should just completely fall apart. So now you have the turkey carcass left. And this would make an amazing stock, an amazing soup. And it always helps for either Thanksgiving or the next time you cook turkey to make a really nice stock to make a really nice gravy. But don't just throw this in the garbage. This is a beautiful bird and you don't want it to go to waste. Once you have your turkey breasts and legs taken apart, pick up your breast and then simply cut it into nice about the size of your pinky slices. That turkey breast is portioned and your family can have a really easy time just helping themselves. Congratulations, you just cooked an amazing pasture-raised turkey, supported a local farmer, and helped revolutionize our meat industry.